You're listening to the Be a Better Lawyer podcast with Dina Cataldo, episode 200. So how do high achieving lawyers break through generations of being taught that we have to grind ourselves into the ground to get results for clients, build a successful business and create a life we love? While law schools are busy teaching the rule of law, they're slacking on teaching us how to be a better human to create for ourselves the success we thought we'd achieve after law school. This podcast bridges the gap between law school and life. Hello, hello. It is number 200. Pretty amazing, huh? 200 episodes, mindset, and all things goodness. And if you've been with me for some time, I want to thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the podcast, sharing it with your friends. I know that some of you text people about it and that you share it on social media and you email me about it. I want to thank you so much. And whether you've been with me since the beginning or this is your very first episode, I want you to know I am just getting warmed up. All right, so today you're going to learn the mindset that you need to cement any habit. Our mindset going into creating any habit is essential because our thoughts are catalysts to the actions that we take. Our habits are our default programming in our brain. Whatever happens in our life, emergencies, the unexpected, we are always going to fall back to what our habits are. Now, I could have an off day. I could not sleep well for a night or two, but my habit is to go to bed early and wake up early. So my body automatically gets back into that rhythm quickly. It was not always that way. I had to turn myself into a morning person first. I had to become the person who was a morning person, and that required changing my mindset, right? That changed my identity, and it changed my default programming. Maybe you notice that your habit is to wait until the last minute to get projects done. That may come from the mindset that adrenaline is the best way to get things done or the belief that you don't have time or that planning doesn't work for you. When you retrain your mindset, you'll be able to create the habit of planning out projects earlier and placing them on your calendar. You're changing who you are, what your default programming is. And then if occasionally you don't, it's not the end of the world because your habit is going to be to revert to planning. Now, I am going to walk you through the five mindset pieces that you need to shift your total mindset, your identity to create the new habit that you want in your life. So think about something. What is it that you want to change? What do you want in your life that you don't have right now? What would make your whole life easier? For me, it was planning. It was waking up earlier. You know, just pick one, okay? And then I want you to apply what you learn here today to make it happen. Before we jump into all of this, I want to ask you for a favor. Would you leave a review for Be a Better Lawyer podcast? Reviews are one of the best ways to introduce lawyers to this podcast and to mindset work. And when lawyers learn what I teach in this podcast, I know it changes their lives. I get messages, I get emails telling me so, and I want to expose as many lawyers as possible to this work. And hey, if we have a bunch of lawyers doing mindset work, it's just going to change the profession. So what could be better than that? I wish I had these coaching tools available to me that I knew that they existed even sooner. And I imagine since you're listening, you do too. You can go to dinacataldo.com forward slash 200. And as you scroll down, you will see a link to leave a review. I would very much appreciate it. And it would be a lovely gift as we celebrate episode 200. All right, my friend, let's get into the five mindset pieces that are going to help you create the new habit that you want. So first, you've got to believe it's possible and that you can learn how to learn the skills that you need to create the habit. And this is where most people give up. Step one, that's why it feels so hard to start anything new. We give up on step one. (laughs) And then we begin to believe that we just can't start new habits and that it is hopeless. We build a case against ourselves. And anytime we start something new, we look at all the times when we didn't start new habits. We start building a case against ourselves. Then we tell ourselves, see, I knew it. 
it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You tell yourself you can't do it or that you've never done it before, then you don't do it. Why? Because the thoughts we think, our mindset, generate feelings that in turn generate our actions. If you think you can't do it, how do you feel? Disappointment? Doubt? Resignation? Those feelings fuel the actions you take next, whether it's deciding to watch TV instead of work out or jump into your workday instead of strategizing it ahead of time. Of course, the result is going to be that you don't create the new habit. Then the next problem I see here is the thought, I hope I can do it this time, or even I think I can do it this time. They sound really great, right? And we're actually told hope is a good thing. Hope springs eternal is a phrase I hear a lot. But let's be honest here. If we hope it'll happen, we do not believe it will happen. Those thoughts are not any better if they are generating feelings like doubt or disappointment ahead of time. Remember, our feelings drive our actions. We must decide that it will get done. We must decide that we are making calendaring a habit. We must decide whatever it is you are wanting right now that you want to make a habit, that you are going to do it. That decision will be backed up by the four mindset tips that I'm going to give you here. They're not really tips. There's, they are pieces of this puzzle. But step one is not hoping or doubting. It is deciding. Here's what you can do to find out what's going on inside your head when it comes to the new habit you want to build. Ask yourself, what are the stories you tell yourself about yourself and what's possible for you when it comes to this habit? What are the stories you want to tell and start looking for evidence that you're already that way? So here's what I mean by that, that second question, right? Like, what are the stories you want to tell about yourself? Like, I am organized. I want to be able to tell myself that I'm on time. Like, ask yourself what you want to tell yourself and then start looking for evidence that you're already that way now, right? So I'm the kind of person who's organized because, and then fill in the blank. Where are you already organized in your life? You may not have an organized desk, but you might have an organized closet. You might not have an organized closet, but maybe you have an organized kitchen sink area. I mean, like start looking for the evidence. I'm the kind of person who's on time because now You may tell yourself you're not on time because sometimes you're late to the office, right? But where are you on time in your life, right? Are you on time when you go to court? Are you on time when you have an appointment with a friend? Start looking for the evidence. I'm the person, the kind of person who can follow a calendar because I'm the kind of person who's good at planning because, right? Now, if you tell yourself you have zero evidence, that is 100% not true. You have planned dinner parties and nothing exploded. You've planned your week in law school and you managed to graduate. You've planned how to study for the bar and manage your calendar with what they told you needed to get done and you figured it out. So gather the evidence just like you would building a case, right? Start looking for the evidence in this step. All right, so the second mind piece, mindset piece here, number two, make it as easy as possible to follow through. Now, when we are implementing a new habit, we don't always ask ourselves what might it make it easier to start a new habit. We think of our brains as robots and that we should just be doing it because we told ourselves we wanted it to happen. (laughs) Unfortunately, that's not how it works. The truth is, is we've got to take a look at our life. If you don't have the habit implemented yet, it just means you haven't become the person right? You don't have the identity of the person who has that habit. This is not a problem. Now, look at your whole life and ask yourself, how can I make this particular habit easier for me to implement? Like, what is it that would make it easier? So when I was turning myself into a morning person so I could work on my business before I went to the office, I looked at a few things. Oh, and I should probably fill you in if this is your first time listening. I was a full-time criminal prosecutor and I worked on my coaching practice in the morning because that was the easiest time for me to think about my business. So I decided that I was going to create the habit of being a morning person. I had to look at a few things though before I could implement this. 
Now, I wanted to go to sleep earlier so I could get eight hours of sleep, so I had to make sure that I was going to bed when I needed to. I knew that drinking with my girlfriends was not helping me sleep, and I was feeling lousy the next morning, and that was preventing me from waking up. So that was something that I thought about, and I ended up implementing. That one was a little bit more, I'll tell you that, but like really starting to look at your whole life, what you want to achieve with this habit and how you want to feel is going to help you implement what you want to implement. It'll become easier. So the third thing that I really needed to look at in my life was, okay, well, my phone, like how could I make it easier? Because I would wake up and I had it next to my bed and used it as my alarm. I would scroll through social media. I'd press snooze and then my morning would be shot. And so I needed to put my phone in the other room. That would make it easier for me to get up out of my bed and create the habit of becoming a morning person. So maybe you want to implement a calendar system as a habit. So what might make that easier for you? Having maybe a set quiet time for planning away from people. Having your desk clean the night before so you can sit in the morning and focus on the calendar. Maybe sticking to one calendar instead of four. Whatever habit you want to create, ask yourself what would make it easier for you to implement. Those are new habits, yes, but if you've decided on one, you will start making the shifts more easily to make that decision happen. It's just like a domino effect. Let it unfold, and that is going to lead us to number three. Be kind to yourself while you are creating this new habit, the one that you have decided that you are going to create. That means that instead of judging yourself, you look at what is working, okay? And this is where my brain doesn't want to do this, and none of our brains want to look at what's working because our brain's job is to look at what's not working. Our brain is, uh, its job is to look for danger, okay? And I want to tell you right now that that is not going to help us create the habits that we want. So maybe having a set quiet time worked to implement your planning time, but you still have a lot of sticky notes on your desk even after doing the calendar. That's okay. It doesn't mean anything has gone wrong. All it means is you have some tweaking to do, and I'm going to talk about that tweaking in the fourth mindset piece. Okay, so maybe you want to wake up earlier in the morning, but you stay up later than you told yourself you would, so you didn't wake up as early as you would like. Okay, I'm going to share something with you. I do that too. Sometimes I stay up later watching a movie or reading and I wake up a little groggy. I still get up, but instead of beating myself up for staying up late or beating myself up telling myself I'm not a morning person or that I'm never going to do this or that this is just not working, I ask myself what I want. Okay, and usually it's to sit quietly with my coffee. Sometimes it's to take a shower to clear my head. Other times it's to go back to bed. But because I'm not mean to myself, I ask myself what my body needs and I respect it. And then I don't get into a story that things aren't working, that I can't do it, that I'm not a morning person, that I'm a fraud. I ask myself what I need and I give it to myself. Okay, to the best of my ability that morning. Okay, we can't always do it, right? Life happens, but we do the best that we can. Now, this leads me to the fourth mindset piece. Be a scientist. Treat any habit more like a scientist than a lawyer. Now, if you have stepped away, if you aren't focusing, come back to me because this is important. This is like crucial to creating a new habit. I want you to know that lawyers pick a side and build evidence to support it. Our brains naturally want to do this because we've practiced it so much. But when you treat a habit more like a scientist, then you are creating a hypothesis and you're not picking sides. You are analyzing what's happening. You are looking at the facts. This mindset piece helps us with number three because we are less likely to judge ourselves when things don't go the way we want them. Okay, let me share how this worked for one of my clients. He was managing a team of lawyers to create webinars to promote his firm. He had done so in the past, but he wasn't seeing the results that he wanted. Now, when we got his brain acting as the scientist, 
He could see more neutrally. When I started asking him these questions and I got in there and I could see where he was judging himself versus just looking at the neutral facts, right? this is what we found. Now, as a lawyer, he could see where his brain was building a case against the webinars. He had thoughts that the webinars weren't working, that his particular partner didn't like them, that they were a lot of work. But when we got his brain into scientist mode, he saw the facts. And the fact was is that the webinars were working. He was getting clients. He was getting more clients than he had anticipated. And he was getting high quality clients. And he was also getting people asking about his firm even after the webinars, right? So the webinars were working. The promoting was working. But his brain couldn't see that because it wanted to say that they weren't working. It wasn't enough, right? But he was doing exactly what he wanted to be doing. And the webinars were working in the way that his brain had initially said he wanted them to work, right? His partner, this was the other thought, his partner didn't like the webinars. Well, his partner, when we started looking at it like a scientist, well, his partner was on the same side as he was. He wanted to build the firm, right? The other thought that he had was that the that um, these webinars, right, they, they were hard. Well, the truth was is that the webinars were actually getting easier. He had to spend less time on them because he was releasing the reins to other attorneys. So he was just doing a supervisory role. If we let our brains stay in lawyer mode, right, then our brains build a case against what we want to create, against the habit that we're creating without evaluating the facts. When we got this him to really look at the facts as a scientist, he could evaluate the facts and make better decisions about how to tweak the webinars and then ask himself, well, what will give, give me even better results like follow-up emails or having associates do follow-up calls with potential clients? And if you're starting a new habit, it's the same thing. Your brain is gonna default to building a case against why you can't start this new habit, why it's not working, or why it's too hard. Our brains are built to conserve energy and building a new habit takes energy because it takes building new neural pathways in our brains and paying attention. Of course, it wants to build a case against you. It wants to build the case against me too. It's our job to see what it's doing and then ask ourselves, what if I was the scientist here? What might I be looking at? So for instance, if you're creating a habit for working out and you notice yourself not doing it, you can ask yourself, why do I think I'm not doing it? That's your hypothesis. Now you can't even get here. None of us can. We can't even get to being a scientist if we're judging ourselves. That's why being kind to ourselves through this process is so important because when we're judging ourselves, we cannot get to asking ourselves questions like, why do I think I'm not doing it? Because we're so busy judging, we have so much energy there that we can't get curious. Scientists are by nature curious, so we've got to switch over, okay? Now, when you start asking yourself what the hypothesis is, why you're not doing it, you might come up with things like, I don't like working out in the morning, I don't enjoy running, I don't have time, right? And instead of looking at those like judgments or like facts, okay, we go through each hypothesis. These these are not facts, what I just said. <laughs> we look at them as a hypothesis for why you're not creating the habit. And then you go through each one and you ask yourself if they're true, okay? This is what this is gonna look like for you. Pick that habit that you wanted to focus on and ask yourself, why do I think I'm not doing it? And you're gonna have a ton of thoughts. They're gonna sound like, I don't have time, I don't want to, it sounds hard, that's okay. Write them all down, but don't believe them. Don't make the mistake of believing that your thoughts are true. That's where so many of us get caught up is because they feel true, okay? But if you go through these as if they are hypotheses, then you can start coming up with another hypothesis because scientists don't give up. They keep forming hypotheses until they get a solution. They're problem solvers, and we talked about that in uh, just a few episodes back. Now, We go through each and every one of them. Is it true I don't like working out in the morning? You're cross-examining yourself. Maybe it is true, okay? 
But, and then you start ask, you start like letting your brain go, hey, but I used to work out in the morning all the time. Has something changed in my schedule? Oh yeah, I've been staying up late to take care of my child. Is there a workaround to this? Yes, I can go for a run in the afternoon. What would make that easier for me? Having my clothes in my bag the night before, telling my partner ahead of time, telling my assistant so I don't have any calls at that time. Do you see what I mean? Like you just go back and look at the other mindset pieces and you go from there. You are developing, redeveloping, refashioning your hypothesis to keep going after what you want. Like that? So let's do another one. Is it true I don't enjoy running? No, then it's not a problem. If yes, that is true, I don't like running, okay, well, what do I think I'd like? And then you just start trying things. Is it true I don't have time? Maybe. Could it be true that I'm not managing my time well? Maybe. What might I do different to make more time? Could I delegate something, ask for help, plan my week in advance, etc., etc.? And then you implement and you keep going until you've built your habit. You don't build your habit? Okay, look back. What's the hypothesis? Go back through this section again. Okay? The final mindset piece here. This is a big one. Celebrate your wins. This goes hand in hand with mindset pieces three and four. We tend to ignore our wins and we just keep going. We just got to keep grinding through. When we acknowledge ourselves for doing something we said we'd do, we build confidence that we can do things, that we can trust ourselves. A lot of the lawyers I work with don't trust themselves when we first start working together. They learn to trust themselves because of the mindset work that we do. And one of the things I like to do personally to celebrate is dance. Dancing is actually a way to get habits into our body. It feels good. And of course, if something feels good, our brain wants to do more of it, right? You can also promise yourself to treat yourself to a bubble bath or whatever it is that you like to do. Acknowledge yourself for doing something that you said that you would do and building habits becomes easier and easier because you know you can do it. You are building evidence. Something to watch out for, okay, is judging yourself at any point in this process of building a habit. It's super common. Our brains are very sneaky sometimes. Judgment can look like telling ourselves that we can't do it, but it can also look like telling ourselves that we've failed. Then we feel exasperated and like we're starting all over again. Each time we work on these mindset pieces, we build our capabilities. Each time we look at our thoughts, we become more familiar with the tricks our brain plays and we can have a conversation with it. We catch it and can playfully say, hey, I see what you're doing there, brain. That's okay. I see what you're doing and I am not falling for it. This is the work that I do with my clients. We build their capabilities so they can see the tricks that their brain plays on them. Then they have the skills they need to overcome any obstacle between them and what they want. Book a call with me if you know this is what you need. You can book a call with me at dinacataldo.com. I love doing this work with clients because our brains are fascinating. Our brains are amazing on autopilot. Imagine. Just imagine what amazing things they're capable of when we know how they work and direct them where we want them to go. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.